everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Addie and I have been making videos on painting and procreate and watercolor and clip art, uh, all of these topics. And today I wanted to do a video running down all of my watercolor brushes that are included in the clip art pack which is free, you can download it in the link in the description below. And what I'm gonna do in this video is just walk you through each brush, some of the characteristics, and then I'm going to paint something and kind of show you how I use the brushes throughout the process and at which point in the painting I use each brush. I don't use all the brushes in this video because there are a lot, but it, it is going to hopefully give you a better idea of how I utilize those brushes. As a bonus, after you sign up and download the clip art pack, I am going to be sending out the color palette that I used in today's video, along with the sketch paper texture, which is new and different from the ones included in the clip art pack. And I'll also be sending the sketch paper brush so that if you wanna make canvases of any of your own sizes, you can use that brush for that purpose. So I'll be sending those out, um, but definitely follow the link in the description to download the clip art pack if you haven't already. Otherwise, everything else will be automatically emailed to you if you've already signed up. So let's get into it. The first brush in this group is the Petal Painter brush. This brush is pressure sensitive for both size and for taper, but it has really consistent opacity and color as you use it. Next is the Taper Texture brush. This one is also pressure sensitive for size and taper, uh, but it's got a deeper pigmentation and it's soft on both edges. The Inverse Dynamo. This one is pressure sensitive for size and taper as well, but it's also pressure sensitive for opacity. So the harder that you press on it, the more transparent it gets. This brush has more of a dimensional look. Next is the Soft Damp brush. So this brush is also pressure and opacity sensitive. However, it's more color sensitive and it has more of a wetter, softer look to it. Next up is the Scraggly Watercolor brush. So this is a rough brush that I think is really good for loose florals. It has a hard outer edge and then a soft inner edge and it also has a jittery random look to it. Um, it has quite a bit of pull to the brush, meaning that it's good for mixing colors. Uh, even as it's being used as a painting brush, not a smud brush. Last brush in this group is the Rough Dry Brush. This is a large fluffy brush and it's pressure sensitive for both size and pigment. I really like using it for adding pooling, layering different colors and filling in washes. Now this next brush is the Wooly Water Brush and this one can be used as both a blend brush and a paint brush. I like to use it as both. I use it in a similar way to the Rough Dry Brush to add pooling as a paint brush, but then as a blender brush, it's really good for like a just add water effect. The Blotty Blender Brush is a really good brush for pulling pigment around the canvas without leaving any brush marks. It's definitely a fluffy brush. Now, the Watery Bleed Brush is an edger brush. Uh, this is definitely a less is more sort of brush. It is really good for adding a real watercolor effect, but you can easily overdo it. So I like to use it really sparingly. Definitely play around with the opacity as you use it, and you can use it to make it look like colors are bleeding into each other or the pigment is pooling. The Damp Bleed brush is very similar to the Watery Bleed, but it's more consistent in both size and opacity and then has like less jitter to it. The Wet Bleed Edger is really good for achieving a darker hard edge effect. This one is super pressure sensitive and it's also directional. The Clean Edge is the more consistent of the hard edge brushes. So it can help you achieve a look of painting like multiple layers and having the watercolor dry in between. Next we have the, the Moss Salt brush, which I like to use in a couple different ways. I use it usually at the end of painting to add some texture or more dimension. And then I also like to use it as an eraser. So if you select it on the eraser tool, 
It can achieve kind of a look of adding salt to your paintings. And then we have our recycled paper and our pastel paper brushes. Now that I've walked you through those, I am going to do some painting. So I'm going to start off with this quick pencil sketch that I have here of a bird. Now I'm actually going to go in and use the scraggly watercolor brush. I'm going to choose a black and I like to get some of the detail in pretty early on and so I'm going to go to my uppermost layer to paint the eye. And then I'm going to go in and smudge with the Wooly Water Blender, bring the size down a little bit. And then I can tell that I smudged a little bit outside of the hard edge. So I'm just going to select that, do a three finger swipe down to bring up these options and hit cut. And then I'm going to add in just a regular layer that I keep on the normal blend mode setting and choose a white. I'm going to use a soft damp brush to add some highlight in the eye. I like to do this very early on because otherwise they look dead to me. By keeping the blend mode normal, you get a true white. So if you're ever painting with a lighter color like this, if you're painting on a color burn, multiply, linear burn layer, the white will just blend in. You won't see it because that's what that blend mode does. Now I'm going to go back down to my original painting layer and I'm going to go in again with a blue and I'm going to stay on the soft damp brush. Now I am pulling in from the edges here because I want less pigment over here and I want to just have some, some really washed out watercolor look, but I still want to keep some, some of my harder edge over on the sides.
Now this time I'm gonna use this Fragly watercolor brush, but I'm gonna bring the opacity way down. And I'm gonna use this partially as a blender, but also to slightly increase the pigment. The beauty of digital watercolor is that you can't be afraid to just try things because you can always undo and you'll probably learn something in the process which is pretty cool like this this might be kind of weird i don't even know what kind of bird this is but we're just going for it you know i don't want to fall for you oh no but you make it so hard watching you dance so night baby it's making me fall hard Trying to take a deep breath, but I just can't control my lungs. Ooh. Trying to hide my cold sweat, but I just keep on talking in tongues. It's a funny situation that I got myself into. I can help my own frustration. I think I like it. I think I like it. Got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Cause I think I like it. Tell me if you like me too. I'm gonna go back onto this layer and draw these little legs here. And for this, I'm going to use the tapered texture brush. And then I'm going to go in on the layer that I painted the white and just select another white and again the soft damp brush. And then I'm going to go into another layer and use the tapered texture brush. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and hide my sketch layer. And now it's just the last details here. I had this layer here that had shading. I'm going to merge that with my bird. And then I'm going to go back to this yellow. I'm gonna choose the watery bleed brush. I'm just gonna carefully add in some of these edging brushes. I'm using this to really make the art pop. I'm gonna go back in with the blue. And this time I'm going to choose the clean edge. And again, you just want to use them sparingly.
And then as a last touch, if we want, we can go in, select the layer that has the most of the bird on it, and then go in with the eraser and the texture adder and just throw this in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful, maybe you learned something. Definitely leave me a comment below, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you want more watercolor, painting, iPad Procreate kind of stuff. Um, I'm gonna be back with episode three of the clip art class, but I wanted to jump in quick and give you a rundown of the brushes so that maybe if you're following along and creating this process, you can have a better idea of what the brushes do and that will help you when you're ready to make your clip art in the next step. So till next time, thanks so much.